Thank you to Loop Deck for sponsoring this video. I was challenged to try Loop Deck's professional editing console. They were so confident that it would speed up my video and editing workflow that I had to accept. I challenged myself to not use the keyboard and only use the Loop Deck and the MX Master 3S mouse for a full week in production because I wanted to know, would I be able to do it? I'm Rafael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And I'm always on the lookout for tested tools that help me get the job done faster. And up until this point, I've only used the keyboard and mouse, the Logitech MX Master 3S, and I have developed a good muscle memory with them. But some of the contortions that I have to do with my hand just for the simple actions in Photoshop or Final Cut Pro were always uncomfortable. And I like keeping my hand on the mouse as much as possible, so it bothers me when I have to use both hands on the keyboard to do an action. The idea of a customizable control surface with physical buttons, dynamic buttons, dials, and even a touch screen to streamline the process, that really excited me. And right from the beginning, I already knew that I would have to develop a new muscle memory to make this really faster than I already am, but I was definitely up for the challenge if it really did work. The Loop Deck is actually fairly small and it can be set up for most applications on Mac and PC. And it doesn't have to be set up from scratch because there's a whole marketplace where you can download pre-built profiles for most of the apps, which is a great way to get started with this thing. But for this video, I'll go over how I set up the Loop Deck with Final Cut Pro for editing, Photoshop for editing photos, and Ecamm Live for streaming. And especially with the MX Master Mouse, which I've had for years, I'm finding that this is a fantastic combo. So there's a lot to go over with the Loop Deck, the touchscreen, the physical buttons, the dials, but one of my favorite features is the main touchscreen dial. It's not just a simple touchscreen, which stops and starts the video. It can be customized into multiple zones. For instance, I downloaded the Final Cut Pro with Command Post Profile, and I tweaked it a bit to suit my needs. So I have two pages set up on this touchscreen, the main jog wheel, which is play pause. But if I swipe, now I have four options. There's four zones that you can have set up here. And there's multiple ways to set up the zones. So it can actually be set up in multiple configurations. One button, you can do colors. And this is just for Final Cut Pro. You can do a list so you can scroll up and down. You have more colors, you have the shuttle and you have the command post shuttle. So it depends on how you wanna set it up. And this is just for Final Cut Pro. So right off the bat, when we go into Final Cut Pro, you have editing, color, and audio. We'll get into all this, but right now we're just gonna go into editing and I'm just gonna swipe over. The way I have it set up is I have play and that just plays. And at the bottom, I have a blade. It makes a cut and pause. And just using the mouse and the loop deck together, move and I can just trim the start, so I cut everything up until that point, and just play as I watch, and I can just cut out the part that I want, and just keep going. And I have the wheel set up to zoom in, so very quickly I can find exactly where, I'm, where I wanna cut, and then if I know, I can just create another cut. I wanna cut out this part, trim the start, go here, and just move along, and I can just quickly cut and I can zoom out, zoom in, so I don't have to move my hands away from the mouse and the control surface. So I found that this is a very great way. And then at my fingertips, I have very common commands that I have set up where I like detach audio, I can copy, I can paste attributes, or I can use the dials to make a marker, and then I can quickly go between those markers using the dial, which is great. I can adjust the clip height or just make them really small, or I can do the waveform height if I really want to get into just that. So instead of having to go over and find that over here, or doing some kind of weird contortion on the keyboard, I can also zoom in over here if, I'm, if my hand isn't on the main dial. Let's talk about the 12 touch haptic buttons that are great for setting up complex actions. Not only are they haptic buttons, but it's also a touch screen. 
and I think you can have up to 14 different pages that you can swipe between. I set these buttons with actions that I do quite often, but would need to do a combo on the keyboard to make work, like copy and paste attributes, or copy and paste effects, or remove attributes and effects, or create a compound clip, detach audio, change the angle of a multicam clip, just things that I would be stretching my hands to do different key combinations and having to move my hand around a lot to get these actions done. I never liked that I had to do multiple finger contortions or keep moving my hand from this side because with my keyboard shortcuts, I had my hand set up like this where these were the main buttons, but then when I needed to do something else, I had to move from side to side to get different actions. So I like that a lot of it is just a little, like these are the actions that I use the most and my fingers are here. And then I could just do a lot of different things very, very quickly. So these are multi actions that are set up. And instead of hunting for specific tools, I can just press the tools and I have a lot of the tools available to me. I can just press home, it goes back. Or one of my favorite things is I can just swipe between these. And at any point I can just go back and boom, I can go into color. I can have a lot of the tools that I need, go back to home and same thing with audio. I have more functions here. So even these are swipeable. And these tools are literally at my fingertips. And these are the functions that I use the most when I'm doing an assemble edit. And the physical buttons right next to the main dial are the range tool, the tilde key, uh, the select tool, disable clip and play and pause because I like the redundancy of being able to press play and pause with my thumb while I have my other fingers on the jog wheel. So I have the range selection tool, the tilde key, the, the select tool, disable clip, and play and pause because sometimes I like to have, I like the redundancy. If I press the function key, that gives me the trim tool, the position tool, go to the beginning and go to end and then blade all. So, and these are relatively quick. You can also customize the colors, which is pretty awesome. And the more I've used it, the more I've tweaked it up to suit my needs best. And that's really only this corner of the loop deck. On the left side, you have the home button, return, undo, save, but if you have the command post profile, this actually is export XML. And then you have activate keyboard, which when pressed activates all these. So you see underneath you have the tab, the shift, control, alt, the command, you have the space bar, you have trash, and then you have delete. You have a lot of functions from the keyboard that are right here just by pressing that it locks it in and you can do a whole bunch of different actions with that. If you have it off, then this will swipe through all the pages that you have, but I actually find that this is faster. I just like that's more natural for me because typically I like to go between one and two and you can always swipe back to go to uh, other ones, but you can have multiple pages set up. So if it starts getting a little bit ridiculous, that's when, if, when, when you have so many pages set up, you, you can actually use these buttons to jump through them fairly quickly. So in this case, it jumps through these profiles right here, one, two, and three. And if you press the function key, you have escape, you have export captions, you can do, redo changes, and you can activate the main profile. But you can set all these up with the functions that best suit your workflow. And the loop decks functions, they run deep and you can fine tune your color grades, your audio mixes right here. But I use Final Cut Pro mostly for editing. And if you wanna get this Final Cut Pro profile, there is a free download in the link in the description. And as much as I like the loop deck for Final Cut Pro, it's Photoshop that I saw the best improvement. It definitely reduces the clicking around and keeps me focused on the image that I'm working on. Having the most used tools right at my fingertips is the game changer for me. You have the move tool, the lasso, the brush, the picker tool, new layer, duplicate layer. You have the heal brush. You have the, the paint bucket, duplicate layer, and the healing tool, the hue and saturation adjustment layer, curves, the size tool, the opacity of the tool, and the hardness of the tool. So if I'm using, so I'm just gonna create a new layer and it automatically pops up with a mask. And that's just the way I like working with it because I like using masks, but, but I have my brush and you can quickly see how big your brush is going to be. 
and then the hardness. And so you can make it bigger. If you, sw if you swipe over, you have group plus mask. You can merge. You have the text tool, you have gradient, you have the eraser tool, the stamp tool, the pencil tool, the marquee tool. And I love that I can just swipe between the two of them. And the dials are great because they, if we have the brush, I can change the size of the hardness of the brush, even the opacity, and you can just undo everything. And I actually like choosing the size and the hardness and the opacity because it's super easy and it's actually better for me because I can do it in real time as I'm working. With the dials, you can change the scale of a layer. You can also rotate it, you can adjust the opacity. So I can adjust the scale, the rotation, the opacity while you're working on it. I also like that there's a color picker where you can quickly just get what you're working with. You know what? Let's change that from the spot healing tool. We're gonna change it to the eraser tool. So then we have the brush and then the eraser. Bam, just like that. I want that and I can go back here and then erase. And sometimes I feel like the loop deck is a little bit overpowered and I'm still trying to wrap my head around how to best utilize it. So the functionality is exactly what I need it to be. So it's it works as fast as I can think. And I can keep adding tools and functions if I wanted. And I know the more I use it, the more I will adjust it and refine it. Because even over this last week, I've been able to refine and add tools exactly where I want them to do the things that I do naturally just in my own workflow. So once I got over that learning curve, this has become a great, great tool to do multi actions instead of trying to contort my fingers to do the muscle memory that I have with the keyboard. And, and I like that there is a haptic feedback that comes with using this. So I know that if I press something, the loop deck lets me know that, yep, that is active. And sometimes the, the plugin for loop deck and Photoshop, you just need to reactivate it. And you can download that from, go to browse plugins. It opens up your creative cloud and you can just search up loop deck. It will find it in the plugin sections and you can just install. So I already have it installed, but it gives you everything that you need. So with Ecamm and the loop deck turns into the complete control center. So I have though, so these are my scenes, the wide, there's my screen share of the application, or I can, you know, switch it over to a full on screen. We're just going to go back to the loop deck here. Uh, I have my numbers set up. When I do a contest on my live streams, this is how I do it. I can go to my overhead to display what I want to display, or I can go back to wide and they're all named here. And I think that's fantastic. And I, I have comments that can come up. There's no comments right now, but the comment will come up. And if I have a super chat, I can play the animation and quickly turn it off. It's like, yeah, super chat. I love that just visually it's all marked there. And I know that if this was, if I was just using that, that would be fantastic. But I could also quickly go to multiple scenes. If you look up here, so even with the overlays, I can choose the different overlays and just turn them on. So if I have multiple ones, just different effects that play out and I can just choose those. And by pressing the button, they turn on or off. And also with the sound effects, I'm just gonna put that up here. So I can do the same thing. I, if I have like a whole list of sound effects, I can just quickly choose them. Or I have my second screen set up where I can just press the different sound effects for it's and just, I love that I can just quickly switch between the two and then I can quickly turn it off. I have my overlays, the graphics that I can pop up really quickly. The, I have my, the, the big button. So no matter where I am, so I have the applause, I have the bada boom, I have the clock and then I have the DJ horn and also the party maker as just reference for me to quickly be able to and right now I'm just setting up the default and it takes me to the audio page so I can have all the mics and the, the mutes or I can have and I can assign these to do whatever I want. So these can be uh, sound effects, these can be scenes so I can go through all my scenes if I wanted to set it up here. So scene one, scene two, but right now I just have it set up to the scenes. So as my live stream grows, I can set it up here where I have exactly where I want. So if I want to screen share, 
and just gets to the different places really quickly so I can have a better show. So the more graphics I'm able to have, the more things I can just keep adding it to it as the show builds and just being able to glance and just quickly swipe between the different scenes or pages is fantastic. And I have the mic, I can mute the mics right here just by push a button. I can turn up the volume, I can turn it down. I just love having all that control there. And the dial wheel is like a cursor scroll wheel. So the combination of the mouse and the loop deck have made live streaming definitely more enjoyable. And it's just fun at this point. It is, it does feel like it's playing and I love live stream. It's one of those things that I was nervous to do at first. It's such a mind load to talk about a topic, read the comments and produce a fun show. The loop deck is clutch to help do all three well. And as at a glance, I have all my scenes. I can trigger animations and sounds and music. I can bring up the different text graphics very quickly. I can adjust the volumes of the mics or if there's anything played, just quickly mute it. It really does take the mental load off while streaming. All the actions are right there. It just makes the whole process a lot quicker. And, and because of the haptic feedback, I know that the button has been pressed. The process is so easy and it definitely brings down the stress of live streaming. If you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. And it makes it way more enjoyable now. And if I'm not using the, one of those main apps, I have those apps at that I can open up with a quick touch. Just by tapping it, it opens up the app for me and I'm in it and I'm able to, to start working. Or I have a quick web page set up where I just open up to decompress and play some chess as one does. Or I can play and pause music. I can lock the computer, I see the time, the timer is going here. I can adjust the volume. But there is one thing that I want you to be aware of and that's this right here. So things to be aware of is switch off the screen capture button. And this is more a cautionary tale because these buttons are so responsive that I pressed it without knowing and ended up recording my screen for 14 hours straight, which created a 200 gig file on my system. And it saves all the profiles that are associated with your Mac, but you can turn on the flash drive to save them locally. So if you take your loop deck with you, it'll have those profiles here on the flash drive, but you have to set all that up. And when switching out the commands, and customizing the loop deck, be careful not to do it too fast. It can freeze up the console and force it to restart because it's writing from the Mac to the loop deck. You don't want to do that too fast. It's a simple restart of the software or just unplug the USB-C and plug it back in and it restarts. The list of applications that the loop deck supports is quite extensive. Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Illustrator, DaVinci Resolve, OBS, and that's just to name a few. It's a super fun toy. I'm glad I was challenged to try it out. It is now a nice addition to my workflow. There is a link in the description where you can find out more about the loop deck and pick up one for yourself. Also, if you want to get the most out of Final Cut Pro and ready to really learn it, check out my Final Cut Pro course with over 10 hours of lessons focused on everything Final Cut Pro has to offer to help you master your craft and elevate your story. Link is also in the description. As always, thanks for watching.